this is Professor Vaswai. Today we will look at vectors, but we are going to look at them in terms of trigonometry. So, let's get started. Now, I will show you a couple of quick and dirty vector notations. A vector is a very handy tool in engineering and sciences. And you show it some like that. You just have a starting point and a terminal point, and it has a direction, and it has a magnitude. Some books show vectors with that little arrow on top, or some a little thicker version of a letter. So they will both mean a vector. And the magnitude of a vector, meaning how big that thing is, is shown sometimes like that, like an absolute value. Sometimes it is shown like that with the other vector notation. And sometimes it's shown with the double bar. There's so many options. And sometimes double bar with the thick version. Okay, now, um, when two vectors are equivalent, they have to have the same magnitude, same length, and same direction. So, the other thing that you need to know, if you have a vector, let's say v, and when you multiply it by a scalar, and then you are going to get this, the same direction, but twice bigger. Okay? Um, let's look at a vector on a plane. So, let's say I have a point A and that is at 1, 1, and I have a point B that is at 3, 2, and this is my origin, 0, 0, and I have a vector going from here to here. So you put it as starting point and point, and that is going to be the same as the end point minus the starting point. Now I'm going to write it in the coordinate notation, when you're writing a vector as coordinates, you are using these little greater than or equal to symbol-like things. You're going to write, so this one is OB, which is how far B is, 3 comma 2, minus OA, how far A is, and that is 1 comma 1. So the vector AB is simply going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2, comma, 2 minus 1, which is 1. So it's a fairly easy concept. Um, let's look at adding vectors. Let's say you have a vector, some like that, and I want to add u to v. There are two ways doing this. Now, one way is, if I'm writing, that is called the triangle method. And if I'm adding u and v, this is how you do it. You triangulate it. u to the beginning of v, v to the end of v is going to be, it's like a transitivity law. So my addition vector, omega, is going to be going from the starting point of u to the end point of v. So from here to here, from here to here, is the same as from here to here. So think about it. Let's say you have something, somebody is pulling it that way, and somebody is pulling it that way. There are two people, and a pulling, let's say you have a desk here. That's going to be the same as one person and pulling it this way. So that's what vector addition is, and you're going to um, study that in physics more. The another, another way of adding vectors is the parallelogram method. So let's write that down. Let's say I have the same vector. That's my u and this is my v. 
So what you do is, graphically, you just draw a parallelogram, okay? And then you just write down the diagonal. And that is the addition vector. So that's going to be u plus v is omega. And that one is the one that we were talking about. And it will give you the same result. So you can add vectors using either the triangle or parallelogram method. And this thing in purple is the like a resultant, you know, it's like the result of what's happening. So you are actually, um, you know, doing two things, but then that's equivalent to doing one thing, just like that pulling the desk analogy. All right, now let's do some um, exercises that uses trig. So let's say I have an example here, and I have a vector, um, Let's not call it U. I have a vector V and W. Okay? So, um, and then I will just draw these things. Let's say this is given. The magnitude of V is 5. And the magnitude of W, that's also given. That's 7. That can be Newton, it can be a force, or some like that. And then they're also giving it to you that the angle between is uh, 50 degrees. So these things are given. So let's draw it. So I have a V, which is like that. So it's five units long, one, two, three, four, five. And then I have a W, and that one is seven units long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. And then the angle between the two of them is 50 degrees. So they're asking, uh, what is V plus W, and which way is it heading, okay? All right, so I can actually use the parallelogram law and draw this thing. So it's going to look some like that. Um, let's call this T. Okay, now let's go and let's write it. I, I will write it in terms of the cosine law. So let's go and look at that. So I can actually go and write down what is the magnitude of t? If I'm pulling it one way, 5 newton, and the other way, 7 newton, what would be the equivalent force that I'm pulling that desk with? And I need some angles here. If this is 50, this also has to be 50. Now, I know that the inside angles of a parallelogram is 360 degrees. So this is 100. So I have another... Um, 360 minus 100, 260 degrees left for these two angles. And they are the same, so these angles are going to be 130 each. Now I turn this problem into a trigonomet trigonometry problem. So let's look at this triangle right here. You, are, you have a, oops, You have a triangle that looks like that. So, all right. The tablet is so sensitive to touch that I'm having a hard time with it. Okay, so let's... Uh, okay, let me go back. Here I am. Okay. So it's going to be 130 degrees, so you have a situation where you have this. So I don't know T, but this one is 7, and this one is 5, and you have 130 degrees. So let's apply the cosine law. So I know that T squared 
that's in magnitude and is equal to w squared uh, w not the vector but the vag magnitude w square so let's put it like that this one is the vector this one is the magnitude magnitude minus 2 wv in terms of magnitude again these are thicker cosine of 130 let's plug that in so you're gonna get uh, 7 square plus 5 square minus 2 7 and 5 cosine of 130 and when I take the square root I'm going to get the magnitude of T which happens to be when I plug it in 10.91 if it is Newton you just write Newton it's Kip you write Kip now let's look at this and I will just go okay well I also need to find out which way that blue vector is heading so let's call that gamma now I can use the sine law just like I was using that before and the sine law says sine of gamma over the opposite 5 equals sine of 130 opposite the resultant 10.9 and now you pull gamma out from there and it shows me 20.6 degrees so I can use the cosine law first and get the magnitude of the resultant and then I can use the sine law get the angle that that's heading so it is a very handy tool and the application is related to vectors.